and then so you start producing all this um, all these other enzymes. These enzymes and these chemicals are mixed go and mix in with all that food also. Because this is the stuff that is going to break, like vial that is stored in your gallbladder. Like the gallbladder is really small. And um, let me see if you can, let me go back up a little bit and let me see if you can see your gallbladder. It, this one doesn't show much of the gallbladder. The gallbladder is really tiny. It's right there. So the liver, which is quite large, as you can see, is actually larger than your stomach. Okay? So the one of the things that the liver does is the bile so, and it breaks down fat. Me. So why do we have the gallbladder sometimes removed? Because the gallbladder stores it is stores um, some extra bile okay. and it, but you develop stones in it too. So a lot of times we develop stones on it. If you develop stones or it gets infected, it has to be taken out. So um, where, so if you continue having the stone, where will the stone go? The stones can go anywhere. The stones can go into your pancreas, which is right behind here. And if you look at the diagram, you can see it a little better. Mm -hmm. It's like long. It looks like fat, but it's not fat. Um, so the ducts, they are connected right in there in the diagram. Yes. You'll see the ducts, mm -hmm. the little tiny ducts. When you see those ducts, sometimes the stones get stuck in those ducts. And if it gets stuck in the duct that it goes to the pancreas, then you end up with pancreatitis. You end up in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And because it inflamed, it blocked the pancreas, now it inflamed it. So gallbladder can cause a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. So what does it actually do? It just stores the It stores and gives it out. Yes, it helps the liver with the vial. And once we have it removed, the liver just does its thing. But what happens is once you have it removed, you will find that um, when you have your gallbladder removed, you'll find that a lot of the fat, uh, the things that you eat don't settle well in your stomach. And you get either diarrhea or your stomach is upset. Because that extra, uh, that extra uh, the gallbladder's job is no longer there. So now the liver has to do more work. And you become very sensitive to fats. Mm -hmm. And the, the, there's an aftertaste, like there's a weird taste in your mouth. I don't have my gallbladder, so if I eat a lot of fat, there's like this weird taste. Really? And it doesn't oh. Oh. Uh, we have a ghost here. <laughs> <laughs> no. Somebody move. Somebody move. Oh, no, no. Are you for real? For real? Uh, so, and now, so when you have your, like the gallbladder um, out, then we reconnect the ducts a little bit and then we don't need it anymore. We, we can live without it. But with um, the pancreas, so the pancreas, when the food gets into the stomach, the pancreas also sends out through those ducts, sends out all these juices to cut down, uh, also works with the sugar, the insulin. So. When you work with your insulin, okay, the pancreas is what gets damaged when you are diabetic. Okay, so when you are diabetic, uh, in your you're not producing enough insulin for your body. Um, and let's say like people who get really heavy, like 300 pounds, 400 pounds, they develop diabetes automatically. Why? Because the pancreas wasn't built for those that kind of weight. So it's not given enough insulin for that amount of body. So um, with diabetics, that's what happens. The pancreas gets damaged. The pancreas doesn't function properly. So it's not given the enough the uh, insulin that you need to break down your food and for the rest of the body to use for energy. When you say insulin, you're also mean enzymes, right? Insulin, enzymes, sugars, yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's, yeah, he's right, he's right. Huh? Yes, Papa. Oh. oh my God! Yeah, yeah. It's it, the pancreas is uh, it's you know it needs to, everything in the body has to be has to have a. I'm sorry about that. Everything in the body has to have uh, a balance, a balance. So a lot of times people say. I know that in our culture, a lot of times people say, oh, I don't want to start insulin because I've become addicted to it. And I have to in use insulin for forever. Yeah. Actually, they don't understand the other way around. 
that you don't have insulin. So now you have to give your body what it used to produce because without insulin, your body doesn't function. That's why if you don't inject in yourself insulin, you start getting really sick. Mm -hmm. um, you can start, you know, uh, you can have a stroke because your blood starts thickening out. You can have a heart attack. Uh, you can have, you can have a, a clot, an emboli, a clot that goes to your brain, to your heart, to your lungs. Uh, so all these things can happen for you. Uh, so the pancreas gives out, controls all the insulin and enzymes in the body. We're totally, we, we have every single chemical that exists in the body, pretty much, pretty much. Uh, we have minerals, we have sodium. You know, if you look at stones from the gallbladder, if you take out a stone from the gallbladder or the kidneys, if you look at them, they're stones, regular stones. Now, sometimes, and we, like I mentioned last week, sometimes we want the stones or the dust that you're peeing out on the stones, if, if it's a, a kidney stone, because we want to see if the stone is due to a problem with calcium and overproduction of some sort of chemical or enzymes. And, and that tells us if we need to put you on medicine. Sometimes it's just a simple fact that you're just drinking too much things that are not water and you have no water in your system and the kidneys have nothing to work with. All right, let's try shutting the lights again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's doing it all by himself. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you notice, the liver, see how the liver has that little cut like in the middle, that little fleshy thing in the middle? Uh, it's not divided, but it does have that piece. And, and again, the liver is one of the few organs we can take a piece out of and it will grow back. Mm -hmm. So we can donate a piece of the liver to someone who doesn't have a liver. And the only thing they need is a, is, is a piece mm -hmm. to start out with and the connections. That's it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what is all these enzymes, all these chemicals, insulin, via all these things go into the stomach and start the process. It goes into your small intestine, it gets given away, right? And then it goes into your large intestine. The stuff that's not, not wanted. For the body. No the boy. body doesn't want it. So you took yeah. everything out of it already. Yeah, all the nutrients all yes. the There's two enzymes on that which I can't say. Yeah. Part of the small, the part of the, uh, part of the small intestine. It's just the name of the, uh, we named the intestines. Uh, if you notice, if you look on your atlas, it has, can I have your atlas for a second? So we give it names. Page 34, Marcus. Thank you. Do a dendo, huh? Mm -hmm. I can't pronounce it. So you will see that the intestine has different names according to the locations. And it tells you also right up here in the top part where it says, it tells you that this section located in the exit of the stomach tells you how long it is and it contains secretions from the pancreas and the vile salts from the liver. So you see so the stuff that the liver and the pancreas and all the stuff gives out have different parts where it gets absorbed. Now you also see the, um, the, 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 the second one right there, the jejunium, is located in the upper part of the abdomen, abdominal cavity. And this one is about 10, look at the size, 10 feet long, okay? And then you have the ileum. The ileum is in the lower part and is 10 to 13 feet long. We have, so far, I just counted, 10, for, 10 feet for the duodenum, 10 to 12 inches from the duodenum, and the ileum is 10 to 13 feet. All that is inside of it. And then we have the large intestine. Um, so in here in the book, in, the, uh, in 34 and 35, you'll be able to see, um, you'll also be able to see the pancreas, how it looks, and the ducts that connect the pancreas. It, it gives you a little, a different uh, perspective in there. But it's quite long. Uh, maybe another question. I just want to see the connection. Is there a connection between the, well, of course, there's a connection from the brain to the stomach, but yes. as far as the acid produced, uh, is there a reason why people under a 
lot of stress has some of the things and may, may produce ulcers yes. or something like that? Yes. Um, uh, there is a connection because when your body is under stress, your brain automatically goes on, uh, on, on, uh, on a mode, a protection mode. So your brain knows it's under stress. Your brain knows it, it, it's under danger. Something's happening. So what it does is it accelerates your heart. And the moment it accelerates your heart, and um, your blood pressure also can go up slightly higher, um, it automatically makes your stomach work harder. So you automatically, your body goes on a warning. Something's up. So it gets ready for a fight. It gets ready for something bad to happen. Something's gonna happen. So automatically it protects itself and it starts building up. So it burns, um, it starts burning more fat. Also, I, actually I should be thin by now, but I'm not. Um, but uh, it's, uh, it also it starts producing more, um, more bile. And your stomach starts getting all riled up and it's empty. So this is where you get a lot. Now the ulcers are not due to necessarily to that. Most ulcers are due to H. pylori. It's a bacteria. So H. pylori is a bacteria. And this is a bacteria we see in foods that have been not processed really well, that were not cooked well, or they were touched with some junk, like fecal matter, things of that nature. Uh, and um, so one of the things, the H. pylori normally, normally H. pylori goes away on its own. Most of us have been exposed to H. pylori because we eat outside, we eat at restaurants, we eat everywhere, right? Uh, but it normally goes away. It, the, the body takes care of it. But occasionally it doesn't and it sits in the wall of the stomach and starts eating it away. And it, that's what we call like erosions. It looks like ulcers inside. So uh, like, like the regular skin ulcers. That's what an ulcer down there looks, just like a skin ulcer that is open and stuff. But remember, we cannot have an ulcer in the stomach because that acid that is in there is gonna be able to go right through. So if there's an opening in the lining of the stomach, then that acid now has an extra opening. Doesn't have that protective layer anymore. So now it's going to go right through and it can, it, it can perforate your stomach, which is extremely dangerous. Because that acid will then burn all the, wherever it drops, it burns all the, like the intestines in this case. Most of the intestines and part of your bladder and things like that. And so it's very, very dangerous and you get very, very sick. For the reason when somebody gets shot, they die quickly. If they're, if they're in the stomach and eruptions, yeah. yeah. Um, the same thing as the gallbladder ruptures. When the gallbladder ruptures, the bile, this stuff is uh, this stuff is okay to be in there as long as it's contained within its proper container. But the moment it gets pulled out, whether it ruptures because of uh, you know the, the infection was so bad, then it spreads everywhere. So once you get even a, a, as tiny gall, it, it, even as tiny as the gallbladder is you know, or the appendix, which is right behind there. The, the appendix is all the way on this side right there, on, underneath all this stuff. Um, oh, right there. See right there is this little tiny thing. Okay. Yeah. What is the appendix in? The appendix is called, well, yeah. They believe the appendix had a major job before. But with the time, with time, uh, with the time. I'm sorry, what is it? The appendix is the most useless most dangerous thing you have. Yeah, it's like, I, well, it, it's useless now, but we believe that uh, at one time it did have a purpose. We think that through the thousands of years, mm -hmm. our body has sort of mutated and um, gotten used to, we know that animals do that, right? We know that animals who were not able to fly 300 years ago yeah. and needed to fly to get food, somehow started developing way, way, wings or ways to fly. So we know that humans went through some sort of process. We also have a gland right underneath here that we don't use. It's useless. Uh, and they think it was needed before because we used to eat raw meat. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but so we think that maybe this was related to that too. Right. That that gave some sort of enzyme that needed for raw meat. 
What, what happens when you eat chewing gum? Is there 